Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Paul here at Northwest Indoor Golf, and today I've got a review coming up on Cobra's new Rad Speed and Rad Speed XB drivers. Stay tuned. Okay, so let's give these drivers the rundown. And first and most obvious difference is going to be that on the top of these heads, we've got a matted finish on the Rad Speed, gloss finish on the XB. Now, if we look at them in turn, we'll start off with the more forgiving of the two. Um, the Rad Speed XB, we've got a singular weight in the back, which you'll see there. These two fixed weights in the front of the head, just behind the club face. And then, there's a fixed weight in the rear here as well, so also non-adjustable. Now, the standard weight is six grams. You can, of course, get two, six, 14 um, commercially available. Um, so you'd be able to get that as part of a fitting. The infinity face features on both of these heads as well. So you've got the milling around the top, which is Actually really nice, it frames the ball a little bit when you set it down behind. Um, and also probably a lot more difficult to damage it from skying it as well. So if that's a consideration, then bear that in mind. Um, lost sleeve is on both of these as well. Now we'll move across to the rad speed. We've got two weights in the bottom. So one at the back and one at the front. I was testing this with the weight actually uh, the heavy weight forward so that actually reduces spin so 12 uh, 12 grams in the front and two grams in the back you've got two fixed weights just behind the face just as you did with the um with the rad speed xb features infinity face again and obviously the matted finish on the top the actual profile of the footprint of these drivers, the XB does look bigger behind the ball. Now, I don't know if that's a combination of the colour as well, but you can see that this one is a little bit bigger as you look down. Even though they're the same uh, size heads, the way that the shape's created does give an impression of a little bit more user-friendly um, user driver. And the XB does also look to have a slightly bigger face as well although it's a marginal difference so um without further ado let's get across let's go and hit some shots so xb first up this is nine degrees i've got the motori x um x flex f1 <laughs> certainly feels very good now when I, uh, when I uh, actually measured the clubs at the start, there's a couple of things that are a little bit out of character. One being the Radspeed XB has got a slightly lighter weight head. The grips on these that come standard are a little heavy as well. So you wouldn't think it makes that much difference, but this particular grip weighs 58 grams. The grip I normally use is a pure, uh, pure pro, which is like 41 grams. So when you get into a driver of this length, having that extra weight in the grip definitely affects the balance point as well. So I've got some cogs for the new Rad Speed drivers. So I'm actually going to do another video following this where I try and dial in one of these drivers specifically for myself. Um, let's hit a few more. I mean, I'm not expecting the best results today. Having uh, decided to lift some weights the other day and hit some balls. Spoiler alert, worst idea ever. <laughs> On to the next one. So, this is the Rad Speed. I've got the two weights set uh, in the standard position. So the 12 gram weight is at the front, the two gram is at the back, which does 
encourage a lower spin profile. I must admit, I'm a huge fan of that matte finish on the head. And what's really cool is it actually doubles up as a fingerprint scanner because I don't know if you can see that, but the marks on this are absolutely horrendous. Um, the footprint of this driver as well is a little smaller. The face looks a little deeper. It's a bit more encouraging. Now, I'm actually trying this at nine degrees. I normally play my driver, my M6, at seven. Um, but as I sort of said before, I'm gonna do a video where I really dial one of these in because my first impressions having hit this, it does spin quite low, certainly compared to what I'm using at the minute. So actually I'm considering potentially going up to a 10.5 degree head and then opening the face to lower it and maybe encourage a little bit more of a cut tendency. So that's to come anyway. Let's give this a hit. on this thing really is so much lower than the XB. Now obviously you are going to pick up some compromises in that the lower the spin the less likely it is to be consistent. I like it though it's actually pretty uh, pretty forgiving considering I mean for me to hit a ball under 2000 rpm a spin is quite unusual. So that's low, that's in the heel. It's still spinning at like 2,200 RPM, which is quite low really. I mean, the ideal window I'd like to be with the launch that I'm at at the minute, it's about 22 to 2,400. Now, with the XB, the spin was definitely higher, probably more in the region of about 2,600 RPM. So there's probably gonna be a reflection in how far these are actually going as well when we get to the data at the end. Okay, review time, and we've got um, two drivers compared, Rad Speed versus Rad Speed XB. And first things first, um, the swings are actually very similar, um, meaning they're all absolutely horrendous. Uh, no, just joking. But the, um, the, the swings were, were similar in terms of delivery, so we've got um, club path, attack angle, swing speed within one mile an hour or one degree, so margin of error really. The ball speed was slightly quicker on the Rad Speed X, which is probably um, more in line with the fact of where the mass in the head is located relative to my strike position on that particular club. The launch angles were marginally higher with the uh, Rad Speed XB, but only a half degree. But the massive difference was the spin, and the spin is definitely having a massive influence in how the ball actually travels to target. So. We're looking at 21.98 RPM on the Rad Speed X, which is pretty much exactly where I'd like to see it. I'd like to see it probably in the region of 2200 to 2400. Um, Rad Speed XB, 26.55. So we're about 250 to 300 RPM higher than I would like. And of course, that's gonna have a reflection on the distance as well. So let me just put on the big screen. Here we've got the consistency of direction. Um, so those rings are a reflection of all the shots, minus an odd one that we have taken out of the averages. Um, but big difference with the spin and the distance was that the ball was actually carrying pretty similar in the air. So uh, we were like 274 yards on the XB, so the higher spin. 278 on the lower spin head, but the landing angle when the ball was coming in to uh, its first bounce was actually really shallow by comparison when you look at the XB to the X. So the X was landing flatter. We're looking at nearly 25 yards of run with the X and only like 15 or even in some cases 10 yards of rollout with the XB. So if you're a high speed player, there's definitely gonna be an advantage to play in the X versus the XB in most cases. 
Obviously, I'm recommending that you go and test these for yourself. There's so many variables to consider now. I've not even entertained playing around with the orientation of the weights. That's another factor which will have a big influence on both launch and spin. There's a bunch of shafts available as standard. So uh, Matori X with the F1 or the F3 um, profile and also Hazardous Blue. Um, which is a little bit counterbalanced as well, because don't forget that these drivers are actually playing at a little bit longer length than you would normally see. So 46 inches on length, which is unusual for off-the-shelf driver, as it were. So. so if you enjoyed the video, smash the like button, get yourself subscribed. We've got loads more content coming just like this. We've got Callaway on the shelf. We've got all the Cobra Fairy Woods hybrids. Irons as well, Strixon is in the boxes in there, we're just working through that as well, so lots of exciting stuff to come. Take care, we'll see you soon.